One of the coolest techniques in Adobe Photoshop is to use a gradient fade to fade out your pictures. Now, this is used a lot of times in movie posters or boxing event posters or truly everywhere, but it's not something that is commonly known how to do or there's not a lot of tutorial videos or they're kind of called something different or they're made a little bit more complex than I think you need. So in this video, we're gonna do the really simple gradient fade effect. So if I look over here, I just wanna show you a couple of examples of how this is already being used. So for instance, if we look at this picture of this character for the movie, notice that the picture eventually fades out into another picture. Same thing with this picture of the ship, it fades out around the edges to fade into this particular picture as well. If we move over here, we can see each of these main characters, their photos will fade out so that we can end up seeing this smash. For the Shutter Island poster, we see that gradient, of fade, gradient fade effect happening here. And also here with the actual Shutter Island, it fades up into the other photo of Leonardo DiCaprio. If we look at a boxing poster, we can see this from side to side instead of up and down. Well, actually, we can see the up and down right here, but we can add a gradient fade this way as well. So in order to do this, what we need to do is first select a picture. Now you can have multiple pictures in your document. If you open a picture from scratch, you just have to make sure to unlock that layer so that you can add a layer mask to it. And you can do this to as many pictures as you want in your composition. For now, what I wanna do is I wanna create a book cover and this is about the Blood Countess Elizabeth Bathory. I don't have anywhere to add the title and the name of the author and the subtitle that kind of explains what the book is about, but we love this photo. How then can we make it so that we can fit it somewhere? Well, the top, her head is already cut off, so we want to leave it up there. Down here, this is probably the least important part of the picture, but if even if we try to put our text, if I turn on the text that I've already created here, it's really hard to see it. So what we need to do is we're gonna use the gradient fade to fade out a portion of this picture to give us space for the actual text. Now I also have a solid fill color background and this is an easy way for me to change the background color and see what I like. So that is the first layer. Above it you should have your photo and then you can have text if you need to. So in order to do the gradient fade effect, what we're gonna do is click on our photo layer, add a layer mask, and notice that the layer mask is all white. We're gonna then grab the gradient tool, and if you hover over it, you can hit G on your keyboard to get to the gradient tool, and it's important that you select the right gradient. Click on the gradient selector box, and it'll ask you to choose from one of the presets. The one we want is usually the second one in the list. If you hover over it, it's called foreground to transparent. Now, you might not have black to transparent. Mine is black to transparent because my foreground color is black. Whatever your foreground color is, it'll show up here. In order to make this work, we actually want it to be black, but if yours isn't right now, it's okay. Just click on foreground to transparent, come over here to your foreground color, and change it to black. The reason why we're gonna do this is because we're gonna use the gradient tool not on the photo, but on the mask that's on the photo so that we can hide portions of the photo using that mask without actually erasing it. So we'll click on the layer mask for this photo, grab our gradient tool, and I'm just gonna start from the bottom and click and drag up. You can choose how far you want it to go. It can be short, it can be tall, but I'm gonna go ahead and do about halfway up the page and just see what it looks like. If you like it, keep it. If you don't, hit Command or Control Z and try it again. If I start later up on the page, notice that it's all black down here now and it's gonna fade into the photo. I don't like that either, so I'm probably gonna start a little bit above the bottom and I probably wanna go to about her chin and see if that works for me. So I can turn, turn on my text and see if that works. If I want to actually make this more solid color instead of the photo, I can undo that mask if I want to, delete that layer mask, or I can just come back here and paint a new mask. So that gives me a much better area or space to put my text in. It's really easy to see, but we can still have this full, beautiful image. The last thing for us to do is change the background color to whatever we want. 
So by having the solid fill color layer, I can choose black, I can choose red, I can do whatever I need to do. Obviously those look hideous because I like the black one and that's the one I chose. And then we could do final things like we can add a gradient map to turn it black and white. We can even reverse that gradient map to come up with something cool. But the whole point of this was to show you that gradient fade effect. You can do this with all different types of gradients. If I were to delete this layer mask and add it back in, I can come over here and choose the radial gradient and I can click and drag out. Now once I do that, if I went the opposite way, I can undo it and either I can choose reverse in the gradient or instead of moving from the inside out, I can move my gradient from the outside in. So I think I need to reverse that and I want to keep her face in there. So there's a nice radial gradient using that gradient fade effect.